All righty then. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Matthew Baker of Beautiful New York Tours. When I had been living in New York for only about five or six years, one of my oldest friends in the world, younger than I and still in college at the time, spent a semester here in New York City. Now, I was not yet a professional tour guide. That wouldn't happen for nearly a decade yet. Uh, but naturally, I showed her around the city that was fast becoming mine uh, as best I could. And she wrote in recently to say that one of the places that she discovered during that trip that really, really touched her and moved her was the Frick Collection. Now, the Frick Collection, which is one of the smallest uh, museums on Museum Mile, and that's a good thing because the big museums, wonderful as they are, you can have a membership for a year and not do all of them. The Frick Collection, you can actually do the whole thing justice in one afternoon. But it was the mansion and private art collection of Henry Clay Frick. Henry Clay Frick was a businessman from Pittsburgh, and he was a, for a while, he was a close personal friend and business associate of Andrew Carnegie, of course, the great steel magnate. Uh, he was, in fact, Carnegie's Coke supplier. Now, by Coke supplier, I do not mean the soft drink, and I do not mean the illegal drug. I mean he provided the iron Coke for the steel making. Yes, I say it that way just to psych people out. Uh, but he made a fortune in this industry until eventually he and Carnegie had a massive falling out, and these two who were once good friends became sworn enemies. The story is told that Frick is actually the originator of a very famous saying. Uh, when Carnegie lay on his deathbed, he sent to Frick to ask him to come and see him, hoping that they could reconcile. And Frick said to the messenger, tell him I'll see him in hell. Legend has it that was the beginning of that phrase. At any rate, the happy news about Frick is that he left an extraordinary legacy of great art at his museum. There are Rembrandts and Titians and El Grecos and Whistler and lots and lots of incredible art. Probably their most famous uh, work, the, the jewel of the crown, as it were, uh, is St. Francis in Ecstasy by Bellini. Uh, though regardless of which art you enjoy, there's certainly a little bit of something for everyone. When Frick was asked how he chose the artworks for his collection, his reply was that he chose art that was pleasant to live with. So as you go through the Frick, you do notice you don't see, you know, depictions of violence or death and disease and things like that. Indeed, the paintings tend to be pleasant to live with. Now, Frick himself was not always so pleasant to live with. He was known as a union buster. He was responsible for cutting the corners uh, that led to the infamous Johnstown flood. There are lots and lots of people who have not so fond memories of Frick, and they do have a point. Uh, but I am certainly grateful to him for his artistic legacy, and as is often the case with people who did both a lot of good and a lot of harm, I always like to say, I am grateful to have him in my life, and I am also grateful that I am not in his. So I definitely recommend the Frick Collection, uh, and make sure you catch the portrait of the man himself who brought all of the works together. It's a stunning building, it is a stunning collection, and it's one of the few grand mansions of Fifth Avenue that really feels like a home that you could imagine someone truly wanting to live there. And that's a very interesting thing to see as well. Once it is safe to do so, once the museums are reopened, definitely come and check it out. And please check me out at Beautiful New York Tours. You can search Beautiful New York Tours on Facebook or email me at baker.tours at yahoo.com. Again, that is baker.tours at yahoo. Thank you very much.